I'm rebuilding Air Force, but instead of running the triple option offense, we have to run the air raid offense. Can I turn this team around in only six seasons with a completely different offense and win them a national championship? Let's find out. FCS East was our first opponent in year one, and the game was not off to a great start for us through the air, and maybe this whole idea was a mistake. The passing game didn't look much better in the second half either, but we managed to squeak out a win. Our week two game was off to a rough start, and so we had to revert back to running the option. This got us back in the game with an opportunity to win it late, as Elliott Robinson would find Jordan Abrams for a touchdown and we would complete the comeback. Week 3 was going to be our toughest test yet as we were taking on Boise State. Somehow though, we had managed to take the lead in the fourth quarter, but would end up going to overtime with the Broncos, which is where they would end up winning it. Broncos country, let's ride. The next few weeks for this Air Force team were rough to watch as we'd gotten blown out two weeks in a row, but it looked like we had turned things around and would beat our rivals, Navy, but that wasn't going to happen either. We were now on a three game losing streak and San Diego would make it four the following week. I wasn't optimistic about things changing for us as we were taking on number 20 Notre Dame at home and they were showing us why they were a top 25 team and I just wanted to forget this one as quick as possible. Our next rivalry game against Army was huge for us because we had almost our entire recruiting board visiting this week so we needed to show up and get a win. Thankfully our offense got off to a hot start and we would close things out against Army with a win. This win would also land us the number one recruit on our board and hopefully a few more wins could get us a few more recruits. This win against UNLV at home would now make it three wins in a row for us, and if we could win this last game against Colorado State, we could reach six wins and be bowl eligible this season. After tying it up, we went for two to secure the win to end the season and would receive an invite to the Armed Forces Bowl against Rice. Rice's defense could not come up with any stops against our offense this game, and Coach Husky would get his first bowl victory in season number one. This was enough to not get fired after a lackluster season one as head coach, and it also helped that Coach Husky signed the 21st best class in the country as well. We were up to a 75 overall in year two and had what should be a very easy first week, and if we were going to prove upon last season, Cornell Smith was going to have to play a lot better this season. The schedule would not be kind to the young quarterback though, as we were taking on number 11 Georgia Tech in week 2, and this game went as expected and Cornell struggled heavily. That game must have knocked some sense out of Coach Husky, because I don't know what the hell he was thinking here with a fake punt on their first drive, and that seemed to set the tone for the rest of the game against Nevada, as they beat us pretty well in our home opener. I was hoping we had a chance to take down UNLV on the road next week, but instead suffered our worst loss as a head coach yet. We needed to beat Navy this week, and we were off to a good start. Even though we'd go up by two possessions before halftime, we would need a fourth quarter kick return for a touchdown to take the lead back. Now all we needed was a stop on fourth down, and that is exactly what we would get with our defense coming up with a huge interception, and we had finally beat Navy. This team couldn't seem to put two good games together in a row, though, and most of the blame falls on Cornell Smith's continual poor performances week in and week out. I can't put all the blame on him, though, when our defense was putting us in situations like this, but zero points and stat lines like this won't cut it as a starter. And I was pretty close as well to starting senior Elliot Robinson. Thankfully, Cornell would come up big for us against an unbeaten Army team, and so his job was still safe for the next week. While it was closer than I would have liked, we picked up a win against New Mexico, but with losses to Colorado State on the last play of the game, our defense not being able to stop Wyoming's offense at all, and being just flat out dominated by Boise State at home to close out the season, we would end with a 4-8 record in Season 2, and with an even worse recruiting class than in Year 1. But despite all this, Air Force decided to extend Coach Husky another five seasons. We were a 79 overall team headed into our third season of the rebuild and we needed to see improvement this year. We couldn't go two straight years without making a bowl game, but unfortunately we couldn't get our season off to the start we wanted as we would end up losing to Syracuse to start year three. Things weren't much better at home the following week against Fresno State and we had a chance to beat Boise State, but Cornell Smith would throw a costly interception that would allow the Broncos to win it on the last play of the game. Another poor performance and losing our fourth in a row to Colorado State, I decided to bench Smith and start Richard Rodriguez next week. Richard Rodriguez's first start against our rivals Navy was not off to a hot start at all, but he managed to turn things around quickly and ended up looking fantastic in the pocket against the midshipmen as he would get us our first win of the season. Richard Rodriguez was right in his momentum into the game against Utah State this week as it was his first ever home game as the starting quarterback for Air Force, and he took full advantage of this opportunity that he had in front of the home crowd as he gave us our first win at home here in season number three. Unfortunately, the hot streak we were on with Richard Rodriguez at quarterback would not last long as we would end up losing to New Mexico the following week. But now it was time for his first test against our rival Army in front of the home crowd. Surprisingly, we hadn't lost to Army yet in this rebuild and we wanted to keep it that way. But after Army took a lead on us in the fourth quarter, it would be up to Richard Rodriguez to lead us down the field for a win and that is exactly what he would end up doing as we would remain undefeated against Army. This was a big game against Idaho for us because we had almost our entire recruiting board visiting this week. That meant we could not keep 
letting plays happen like this one right before halftime as Idaho would score a touchdown headed into the locker room. Somehow though, we found ourselves trailing to Idaho in the fourth quarter, but once again, Richard Rodriguez would save the day for us and he would win this game, landing us every single recruit on our board as well. Hawaii proved to be no problem for us at all and neither did San Jose State in front of the home crowd. The next week against Wyoming was in the snow and Richard Rodriguez would once again be looking to lead a game-winning drive with the offense, but he would take a big hit and go down with an injury, so Cornell Smith was back in the game for us and would score the go-ahead touchdown as our defense would hold off the Wyoming offense and made sure that we got the win in the snow this week. This win would land us a spot in the Idaho Potato Bowl against Western Michigan and thankfully Richard Rodriguez was back from injury and he was playing lates out this entire game for us. This go-ahead touchdown pass to James McLean wasn't just significant because it was a late go-ahead touchdown for us, but Richard Rodriguez had set a new Air Force passing record with it. He would continue to dominate as he would drive the offense down and put us in field goal range, but Rodriguez said screw that. I want to score a game-winning touchdown for my team instead of a field goal and would deliver that for us as we would win the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, giving Coach Husky his second bowl win in an 8-5 record here in Season 3. And after landing the 12th ranked recruiting class in the country, we were ready for Season number 4. We were down 83 overall in Year 4 of the rebuild and I thought we had a good chance to compete for the conference title. We really seemed to turn a corner at the end of last season and became a much better team this year and that theory would be put up to a test in Week 2 as we would take on a Big Ten opponent in Purdue. They seemed to be no problem for us as Richard Rodriguez played a fantastic game in front of the home crowd, but couldn't say the same about his performance on the road against Fresno State the next week though. Rodriguez was doing his best to get us back in the game late though, but would go down with an injury on this play, and now it would be up to Cornell Smith once again who lost the starting quarterback job last season. He managed to complete the comeback for us though with this fantastic throw with 30 seconds left in the game, but wouldn't make the right read on the two-point conversion going for the win, and so we would drop this one to Fresno State. Rodriguez was back from injury the next week thankfully, and it didn't look like he had any lingering issues with it at all as he led us to a dominant win over Navy. We were now off to our best start yet in this rebuild and we were looking to build upon it with a win at home against New Mexico. Unfortunately, our team seemed to keep playing down to their competition each week though. And even though we'd get a win, that was something this team needed to change. As thankfully, we didn't mess around at all in our game against Utah State and we handed them a 44-3 loss. This game against Boise State was huge as it would decide who controlled first place in the division and it definitely wasn't looking like it would end up being us. Richard Rodriguez would do what he did best though and would get us the lead late in the fourth quarter over the Broncos, but after a Boise State score, he would have to do it one more time for us with even less time on the clock, but with all three timeouts to work with. And that is exactly what he would do for us, showing the coaches why they made the right decision rolling with him at quarterback as he helped lead a 14-point comeback win. We were now in first place in the division, and it would be ours to lose the rest of the season. Headed into our game against San Jose State, we were ranked in the top 25 polls for the first time ever this rebuild, but once again, our team was playing down to their opponent's level, and it would take a last-second touchdown once again for us to win what should have been a much easier win for us. This game against Colorado State was huge for us as we had some of the biggest recruits we've ever gone after visiting this week. So you know we had to bust out some brand new uniforms for them to see while they were here. Unfortunately, we were playing down to our opponent though once again and were in danger of actually losing this game. And that's the last thing we wanted to do in front of the visiting recruits. But thankfully, we pulled through and got the win. We had two games left in the regular season and after a close win against Wyoming, we had an even closer one against Hawaii. Richard Rodriguez would get us in field goal range though as we would kick the game winner to go 11-1 and, and land ourselves a spot in the conference championship game. This was our first ever conference championship game of the rebuild and San Diego State would end up striking first. Unfortunately, the offense didn't look too hot on our first possession, but would eventually get on the board at the start of the second quarter. We would tack on another touchdown to go up by 11 right before halftime and would get a defensive stop to start the second half as we would hold the Aztecs to a field goal. That wouldn't last though as they would start to mount their comeback against us and even though we would get a stop against them on third and goal, they would still take the lead. It was once again up to Richard Rodriguez to lead a game-winning drive for us as he would get us deep into San Diego State territory through the air and would cap it off with a short shovel pass to James McLean for the go-ahead touchdown. After our defense got a stop on the very last play of the game against the San Diego State offense, Coach Husky had officially won his first Mountain West Conference championship with Air Force and would celebrate by playing in the Rose Bowl against Iowa. This was our first ever BCS Bowl game and it could not have gone any better for us than it did as we would blow Iowa out of the water this game and end season four as Rose Bowl champions. Coach Husky had certainly turned this team around in four seasons, and it looked like things were going to get even better for Air Force. It was the start of season five, and Brian Atkins was our new starting quarterback. Even though Richard Rodriguez had graduated, we still had massive goals for this team this year, and we were off to a great start in year five. In our eyes, it was a national championship or bust this year after winning a BCS Bowl last year and improving our overall as a team, so we were hoping this was the final season of the rebuild. Brian Atkins was proving that he was the guy for the starting job, both
both through the air and on the ground for us as we started season 5 3-0. Our first scare came in week 4 against our rivals Navy, but the redshirt freshman quarterback would once again step up for us and would deliver two late fourth quarter touchdowns for us to help secure the win. There was one major difference from last year's team to this year's team, and that was that this team didn't seem to play down to their competition like last year's did. That didn't mean we still didn't have a close game here or there throughout the season, but we would always manage to pull out the win no matter the circumstance. San Diego State was a breeze for us at home, but found ourselves in a tight one against Army who we had not lost to a single time this rebuild, and it would remain that way here in year 5. We had another quick tune-up game against New Mexico as we continued rising in the polls, and by our game against Colorado State, we were officially ranked number 3 in the entire country, as we just needed to keep winning the last few games that were left in the regular season. A spot in the national championship was ours to lose at this point, as we were officially ranked number 1 in the country and still undefeated. Even though we had a close win against New Mexico to end the year, we'd still finish a perfect 12-0, and once again found ourselves in the conference championship, but weren't off to the greatest of starts. It was a little closer than we would have liked, but our offense stayed consistent throughout the night, and with this dagger with less than 20 seconds to go in the game, we had won the Mountain West Conference for the second year in a row. It was time for the national championship game, and we would go up by two possessions early over an 11-1 Miami team. They would stay close with us throughout the game, though, so Brian Atkins and the offense needed to put up points on this drive, and that is exactly what they would do with a minute and a half left to go in the game, which would ultimately be the dagger for Miami as we had officially rebuilt Air Force with the air raid offense and had won them a national championship.